Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited because today's guest is Susie Fabrasini. She is a keynote speaker, author, filmmaker, serial entrepreneur, and the author of, listen to this, Protect Your Assets from the Zombie Apocalypse, Do-It-Yourself Financial Planning. So that tells us a little something about Susie, that she's a lot more fun to listen to than the average financial person. Susie's background includes acting, producing, and directing for stage, television, and film. She did the photography for more than two dozen guitar centers across the country. She's published calendars and greeting cards of her photography through her publishing company, and it is called Fiercely Independent Publishing. Susie has won awards for both her filmmaking and photography. Susie served on the board of directors of the San Fernando Valley Soar Optimist Club, where whose mission is to help women and girls locally and internationally. She's also served as founder and director of the Reseda Renaissance Group, dedicated to revitalizing the community through the arts. While working with New York Life, Susie became acutely aware of the wide disparity in financial education between the wealthy and the struggling. She started her own financial services company to cater to the needs of the middle and lower income classes and subsequently founded the Economic and Financial Education Council, bringing together experts from different areas of personal finance to present free workshops for the community. Susie combined her backgrounds in theater and finance and now is a professional speaker and author, and she promotes her fun and sexy finance events all over the country, and she teaches women entrepreneurs, small business owners, and the self-employed how to improve their cash flow for greater financial success in their businesses as well as personally. Susie's a lively and engaging presenter. She's able to speak on a variety of financial topics, and she can tailor them to your group's interests. So with that, wow, Susie, welcome. (laughs) Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm I'm so excited to uh, share and talk with your audience. Well, it is really exciting, and, and money is so important before we before we hit the record button earlier i was telling you about how the topic of money sometimes is frightening it can be intimidating and how if when you want to talk about it let's say like making life plans like you know in the event of someone's death people are like i don't want to talk about that so tell me more about why you're so passionate about helping women and their relationship with money. Women have very complicated relationships with money. Um, I noticed that, first of all, I noticed when I was working as a financial planner, if I went to a networking event and I said, hi, and I told them what I did, I would see women visibly cringe and start to back off (laughs) I realized that there was a problem there. There was a lot of fear around it. And I understood it because one of the reasons I went into financial services, having been in a totally different career path before that, was because I had a time when I just did not understand how money worked. And I was pretty much, money was for paying the bills and that was it. And so then when money stopped coming in, I had no resources to back me up. And, um, and that was a problem because I was a single mom with two kids. So at that point I realized I, it was really important for me to learn about money. And I also knew that I wanted to help other women understand it as well, because it's not something that society sort of expects men 
to understand money. But it does not do the same for women. It almost protects us, or at least for my generation, it sort of protected us from needing to know about that stuff. And they used to, my mother used to tell me that it was impolite to talk about money, religion, or politics. So because we weren't having those conversations, we could talk about sex all we wanted to, and we knew a lot about that, but we weren't talking about money with our friends. And so we weren't sharing information about that. And I think that that was and continues to be a a, a sort of a handicap for women. Um, men are more likely to talk and boast about what they did with their bonus or how they invested. And uh, women don't talk about that. And so... As a result, we only learn about money through our own missteps. When we make a mistake, then we find out that there were, then hopefully we're finding out that there's a better way. But to learn from your own mistakes is really a slow and painful path. And I think it's really important for women to start talking to each other and learning from each other and sharing information. Um, and that's one of the reasons, and I would hear myself saying that over and over again. So finally, I created a space where I live in my neighborhood um, for women to come together and talk about money. And we drink wine and, and eat chocolate brownies. Not not those kind. <laughs> well, it sounds though. So, so you've actually taken the concept that people are not comfortable talking about money, especially it's almost as if women are taught, like you said, your mother said it's impolite to talk about money or politics or religion, but Hey, talk about sex all you want. In my family, you couldn't even talk about that. So you've really had limited topics like the weather, but (laughs) you've actually created some local meetups. And like you said, so it's kind of like wine, chocolate and wealth. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what are some of the topics that you find are the are what do women want to know about money when they come to your your meetup um one thing that's new to them is a lot of times is the concept of well for one thing managing their own money they have a tendency to believe that they have to find somebody to do that for them And I keep telling them, nobody cares about your money as much as you do. And they also have a tendency at first to think that the only place to put your money is in the stock market or some aspect of the stock market. And so uh, we talk about lots of different ways. And fortunately, we have women that do um, different kinds of investing as well in our group. And so we do talk about real estate investing in addition to... um, In addition to there's IRAs and 401ks, and we talk about the differences between those and the different kinds of IRAs. A lot of that stuff is um, like a foreign language for women at first. We also talk about money management and your cash flow and putting money aside and saving money is not just saving it forever. It's always you're saving it for a purpose. And Understanding that is important, too, because you want to have little pockets of money that this is money that we're saving for uh, treating ourselves. This is money for education. This is money for um, unexpected expenses that come up. It's important to have those things set aside so that um, one of the reasons I stress to women, you need to put aside, have a play account where you put like, 10% of your net income into a play account every time you get some money. And that's money that you know that you can, without any guilt, go and spend that money on yourself. That's what it's for. And that way you also know how much you have available to spend on yourself. So for me, I call it my fun account. And I have a little debit card and a little sticker on it that says fun. And so I know if I'm going to go out, I'm going to check how much fun can I have tonight (laughs) and look at that. It keeps me from overspending and then feeling bad about it later, but it also lets me know that I can spend this money and I'm not digging into my savings or my investing money. 
And so we do that with different aspects of money. And so there's, uh, there's that learning how to, um, we call it, you can call it budgeting. A lot of people don't like that word because it reminds them of a diet, but, um, or we use it um, as a, we call it spending plan. We make spending plans. Um, so that's another thing. Well, that sounds, I like the idea of putting money aside where you call it your fun money. That is money that you're going to spend on yourself and you can check it and go, okay, I, I can have 20 bucks worth of fun or hopefully you have more than that. But right. I know that I was a single mom for many years and believe me, the paycheck never seemed to go as far as the week or the biweekly paycheck went. When you talk to people who are, let's say, maybe they're a one, you know, a single parent and they have children and they have expenses like childcare and and different things. How do you talk to somebody who's really trying to stretch every penny and yet they want to learn how to invest? And yeah, usually what I'll do is um, when I'm working, if I was working one-on-one with somebody like that, we go over and for a month we track all the spending because a lot of times people are spending their money the way that they've always done it. And if somebody from the outside comes in and takes a look, a fresh set of eyes can see something that they don't see or that they don't get. Like, um, um, for example, I had somebody who went to a coffee place every morning and it was important for him because of his work to socialize, but he was getting the more expensive, fancy coffee drinks. And I said, you can still go, but why don't you go? And for a while, try just getting a regular cup of coffee and then go over to the coffee bar and add cinnamon to it and, and, and chocolate powder. And it will end up costing you almost the same as if you had made your coffee at home. Um, little things like that. I mean, I can look at somebody's and a lot of times people don't check with their cell phone company and they're paying, I can see that they're paying too much for their cell phone because they never, they've, they're paying the same or they're, they've just continued with that company for years. And even though the company has come out with promotions, if you're already in place, you don't hear about the promotions. And so you can go back and talk to them and change that. And this is for people that are really pinching pennies. Not everybody is in that position. But we look at those things, and then we figure out, okay, now if we take some money off the top, instead of waiting until the end of the month to see what's left and saving with that, let's take the money out right when the paycheck comes in and put that start with a small amount. You won't notice it. Because now you're, whatever's left, you're used to dealing with whatever's left, whatever's in that account. So you're still going to be doing that. And what you won't, you won't even notice that you've taken money out off the top. It's important to take it out off the top. It's never going to be money left over at the end of the month. Um, so then we get them used to doing that. And I say, even if it's just start out by doing something that's not going to be scary for you. Start off by taking a dollar or $10 whatever it is, and then gradually build it up. Um, Because I know it's really scary to first start doing that when you haven't been doing it. And it's more of changing your mindset than anything else at the beginning. And then we start to look at other things. I mean, that's another thing we talk about um, side gigs in the, um, in our group. I'm a big believer in side gigs because if you're working a regular job, then you don't have access to a lot of tax deductions that other people have, the people with side gigs have. So if you start a side gig based on something you're already interested in, and maybe you're already spending some money on because it's a hobby for you or a strong interest, turn it into a little business. And uh, that way, you can start to look at it as our, what ways can we make extra money with this so that you have a backup in case something happens to your main income, but also so that you have the tax deductions and that will help you with more money, having more money at the end of the year. But I think that's a really good 
little piece of advice that many people who are working our hourly jobs or full-time jobs, they don't realize that they could do something very simple and small as a side gig or a part-time job or being self-employed that it Mm -hmm. opens up all kinds of tax benefits that can make it so that you're actually benefiting from, you know, using, you know, art supplies because you're creating something that you're going to sell. I mean, there's all right. different things. And I think that's really important. So you have these live meetups, but you've also started to create some that are online. So pe- so basically you could be helping people anywhere around the world or in the United States. Can you tell me more about that? Sure. We, we um, I started a second meetup and mostly it came because we would get into conversations about things and we would, the um, people would want to go deeper, but there wasn't time and there wasn't resources for doing that in the live meetup groups. So we, I started a um, second meetup group that's called um, money matters for women. And that is um, that's where I'm going to be posting information about Courses, we'll set up courses, seminars, webinars, um, different kinds of financial education where it'll be online so that like up in Boise, if we're having a snow and snowy day, people don't have to brave the temperatures and go outside. They can sit on their computers and watch Zoom and participate. And um, we'll... uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to do all kinds of have all kinds of different things offered there and since it will be on Zoom it can be people can participate from anywhere in the country with that. Another thing that um you had mentioned to me earlier is you said that you were thinking about creating some financial education films or movies and that sounds really interesting. And, and the reason why it intrigued me so much is because you were talking about how you would try to make them have some humor in them, but at the same time, people would be learning about how to control their money or handle their money in a better way. Can you tell me more about that? Oh, sure. Because another one of my theories about why we don't understand money better in this country is because we learn about how to do life from watching film and television. And film and television, there's a lot of stuff about, um, I guess, probably relationships is one of the main things, but they have all kinds of stuff on television, but they don't have people dealing with money issues. Um, So as a result, we don't learn about that stuff. And it's not something that most people talk about around the dinner table. Although um, people that come from wealthier families, I understand they do talk about that stuff at the dinner table. But your average American family does not. And that's why uh, they're slowly losing their space on the, uh, um, the American class system of middle class, upper class. The middle class is, is expanding downwards. We're like, going we're going down most of us are most of us are going further down into the lower middle class based on our financial assets because we don't understand how to make the most of the money that we have and um most of the time people don't realize they don't know what they don't know there's no, they don't understand that there's a lot that they could learn they're not going to go sign up for financial classes but if they're presented with a show that's if if they can watch something on television or on their computers, that's funny and heartwarming or um, affects them in some way, makes them feel something, they will do that. And then my plan is to sneak in some financial education through the stories so that maybe they watch the story, they see what's going on and then they are like note to self. Don't do that. And they learn something without realizing that they're learning something. Well, I I know I would enjoy something like that. I remember when I went to high school, we actually had a class where we learned how to, well, 
I know I learned how to write a check. I, and supposedly, I think we learned how to balance a checkbook. Um, it, I guess it was equivalent to a life skills class. And mm-hmm. I don't think they're teaching a lot of those classes anymore in high school. And mm-hmm. it, it always makes me wonder, at what point in time did they quit helping people to learn how to survive in the outside world. Um, Do you have any concept of of what happened to learning about things like checks and about credit and about money? Yeah, I think, well, I was lucky too, because I had a consumer economics class in my high school, but I went to a private school Mm -hmm. and the public schools were not getting that. But I think part of it, too, and I think more so now than ever, is that they have these, they're teaching in in the schools, they're teaching based on what the kids are going to be tested on. And so they have a very strict curriculum that it's hard for them to go outside of, because I have approached some of the, um, some of the teachers in the public elementary schools, and they said that there's just not room for those kinds of courses unless you did some sort of after-school program because they're so focused on meeting these requirements for the kids for uh, passing all these, these tests. And I think, um, I think it's a disservice, but I have no control over that. Well, I think the, here's the good news that you're actually out there offering these types of of courses and information and you've got a plan in your head about how to make it fun. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your book, um, Protecting Your Assets from the Zombie Apocalypse, Do-It-Yourself Financial Planning. Uh, If somebody reads this book, what would you say they would get out of it? What would the big value or takeaway be if they got that book, um, how would it help them? For one thing, and this was a big uh, reason for me doing it, is that it will help to allay their fears of speaking to a financial person, a planner, because it explains what financial planning is. And that is, um, for a lot of people, they have no idea what financial planning is. That was my issue before. When I would go to a networking, before I became a financial planner, and somebody would come up to me and say they were a financial planner, and they would say, if you need any help, let me know. And I would think to myself, help with what? I didn't know what they did, and I didn't know what financial planning was. So this book kind of lays out what financial planning is and what you can do on your own what you should be aware of, what you might want to, or why you might want to talk to a specialist about something. Because within financial planning, I include life insurance, health insurance, even car insurance, because you're protecting your assets there. And so um, why might you want to talk to a specialist about car insurance? Well, because they know things that come up that you maybe haven't thought about. Like, what if you get hit by a an uninsured driver. You want to have some protection against that. So uh, also with, with like with health insurance, if you speak to somebody who sells different kinds of health insurance, they can explain to you the differences between different insurance companies. So that's important. Um, And then you want to do a lot of the, a lot of uh, self-educating as well. But I explain in the book, like the difference between different kinds of life insurance, who knew there was different kinds of life insurance. And there's a lot of different kinds. And there's some that have living benefits. I always thought, why would anybody want life insurance? Um, Because it's something you put money into, and then you die and somebody else gets the money. But there's a lot more to it than that. And so these are all things that people should know about prior to going and setting up all of their stuff so that they understand why they're setting things up and what's what they should think about. I I have a question. Many people follow Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, I don't really know much about what 
Susie Orman's overall financial ideas are other than she's big on preparation and having things in order. And Dave Ramsey talks about being debt free Mm -hmm. in order to be financially healthy. Do you really need to be debt free? No, no, because there's some debt that helps you move forward in your life. That's good to have. Um, But what you do want to do is make sure that you have your debt in the best possible situation, like the lowest, uh, the lowest interest rates or the best terms. You don't want to be borrowing money from those places on the street corners, the paycheck places. They're horrible and their interest rates are insane. Um, So you want to be aware of different places that you can borrow money from. There's lots of different ways to borrow money. It doesn't have to be from just from a bank. Um, And so that's important. And I think uh, I always, I disagree with Dave Ramsey when he's telling people to pay off all your debt before you start saving money, because that doesn't make sense to me. If you have an opportunity to put money into a situation where you're going to get compound interest, you want to be, it's the longer, there's a time factor. The longer your money is sitting, the more money, the, 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 um, the, the more dramatic increases happen down the line after it's been somewhere for a long time, after you've had it invested somewhere for a longer period of time. And also you want to start that habit of putting money aside earlier on, not when you're 50 years old and now you're clear of debt and now you're going to start saving and putting money aside. It doesn't make sense. Um, and Susie Orman she has a lot of good things to say, but then she's, she doesn't, she's kind of focused in a certain area. I mean, she was a stockbroker. She worked in that, that part. So she tells people, she used to tell people that she used to be um, not a fan of long-term care insurance until from what I understand, then her mother needed long-term care. And then she came to realize how important that is. Also, she tells people not to get any kind of life insurance except for term life insurance. And there's a lot of reasons to look at other kinds of life insurance than term, but she doesn't understand life insurance because she was never in that world. Um, and when I worked for, I worked with New York life for a while and I found out about the different kinds of life insurance and what it has available to you and what you can do with life insurance as part of a whole financial plan. I was stunned and I was like, oh my gosh, people don't know this. People need to know about this, but mostly only wealthy people know about that stuff because they're the ones that people go to talk to with those kind of products because they've, of course, the people that are selling life insurance make more money on the bigger policies. So they're going to talk to the people who can buy the bigger policies. So there's a, a middle America gets left out of a lot of information that could change their lives if they had this information. I think that's really important. What you just said is that just because someone who's famous like Susie Orman or Dave Ramsey says, this is the way to do it. That does not necessarily mean that that is the only way to, to be financially sound and secure. So Mm -hmm. it is up to us as, humans to do our research and seek out other people for advice who have a background, like you said, different Mm -hmm. people, like some people are experts in insurance. Other people are experts in the stock market or in real estate. I mean, there's so many places and that's why I think it's so important to be able to talk to someone like you where you can say, well, let's talk about all of these options and then start looking at the individual. Because I think you're right when you say that that middle Americans are, we're squeezed out because we're not poor enough (laughs) and we're not rich enough. So we're kind of like in, in limbo because we don't know and we don't know the questions to ask. Right. And, and we're not educated at any level, unless we become interested and responsible in that. So how do you work with people besides your meetups and your online programs? Um, 
Mostly that's it right now um, because I also have a couple of other businesses that I'm running and I haven't had time to work one-on-one with people. Although um, if somebody wanted to, um, I have worked with people who've come to me and said, can we work one-on-one just with, taking a look at what I have going on and giving me some direction. And and that I'll do. I, I'm not doing any longer term like coaching programs right now. But um, when I do a, um, when I do one of those shorter ones, I do it as a two day thing, as a twice, a twice meeting kind of thing, whether it's in person or on the internet um, because the first one is to gather the information and then maybe give them some homework. And the second time is to come together with their information. And I will have done some research by then on what, what they have available to them so that I can offer them a solution for what, what it is that they need to do in order to reach their financial goals. Okay. That sounds great. So is there a website that people can go to? Um, I have my own website, susiefabrosini.com has a, um, has a few things. It actually, um, there's a, a way to sign up for my newsletter to get more information. There's also a way to contact me through the website, um, which, or they could call, they could email Susie at susiefabrosini.com. Um, and there's also for people that are interested in, um, tracking their finances, which is always the first step. And if somebody were to have their finances for a month already tracked by the time they came to talk to me, it would save a lot of time. Um, But there's a tracking sheet that they can download for free. And, um, and I think there's also a video available to watch the video to see how to use the tracking sheet or how I use the tracking sheet. And it's set up actually uh, the tracking sheet is set up for people usually with multiple sources of income who can then use the tracking sheet, not only to help them with their budgeting, but also with their taxes. Um, that sounds but, like a really good tool. To yeah. I developed it over the years because I was getting so frustrated with the number of different things I was doing and it would take me so long to get my taxes ready that I kept thinking I need something that's faster where I can just push a button and everything is ready for me to take it to my tax guy and it sorts everything. So that's why I set it up that way. Wow. I'm going to have to go look at that. (laughs) (laughs) That's one of the things I think that gets many people frustrated is because there's just so much that has to be organized and, you know, you're sitting there going, Oh my goodness. And it would be really great to put something and track it and push a button and have it all organized in a way that's ready for your tax accountant or, or your CPA. Because, mm-hmm. um, that is what's frustrating. Well, gee, I've learned, I've learned an awful lot today before I let you go. Is there anything you'd like to add that is important about women's relationships with money? Um, I would say Don't be afraid of money. Um, Think of it in terms of a relationship, just like you would have a relationship with other people in your life, with friends. You nurture those friendships. You nurture those relationships. Nurture that money relationship. Pay attention to your money. If you ignore it, it will ignore you, and you'll both be unhappy. But if you pay attention to it and take care of it, that's the way to get it to grow, just like in a garden. Um, It's money can be a really, it can be fun and exciting if you get together and you just start talking with your friends about it, like sex. Only now, talk about the money and talk about the different ideas and ways that you can grow it and don't be afraid to try things. Try things in little bits. If you hear about something that sounds like, oh, that could be an interesting, um, an interesting investment, try it in little bits don't risk money that you couldn't afford to lose. But, you know, take a look at cryptocurrencies. Take a look at investing in small businesses online, all those kinds of things, and see what gets your blood going, what 
what seems fun and interesting to you? Because there's a lot of different opportunities out there. Well, I I know that that's a fact. Like my 92-year-old father has had tons of fun investing in hemp and marijuana stocks. Ah, mm -hmm. And he does his research and he, but he's, you know, he really gets into the background and the companies and, you know, educates himself. And then he invests a little bit, you know, not a lot, but just enough that if it, hits it hits and if it doesn't it's not like it's gonna hurt you know until he gets used to it but that's what I found is people who enjoy educating themselves and learning they seem to be the ones that you know move ahead no matter what they do so wow I, I really learned a lot so thank you so everyone it's Susie and I want to make sure I say your name right because I had it written down Fabrosini. I love that name. SusieFabrosini.com. And again, she's got the free tracker. Uh, You can go check out her book um, about the zombie apocalypse so that you don't, don't lose your assets in the zombie apocalypse. I love that. And you can find out all kinds of things about Susie, just Susie uh, Fabrosini, and you can put it into Google, which is what I did, and you'd be surprised at all the cool stuff that comes out about <laughs> you, Susie. Uh, <laughs> and then, like you said, right now you do these live meetups in Boise, Idaho, and mm-hmm. then you have the online meetups that that are happening soon. And then I certainly hope people get in contact with you to find out more about your um, finance acting classes or your your shows that you're going to be putting together because that sounds like a lot of fun um, to be on either side of that situation as the viewer or as somebody who would be acting out some of these financial situations. Um, I, I can just imagine what kind of fun that could be. So I really appreciate it. So thank you so much, Susie. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you. Everyone, this is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.